Praise God. And what a great day this is as well. Can you say amen? This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. Praise God. Can you just turn to somebody? You may not can hug them or shake their hand or do, I don't know. But at least you can smile at them. Tell them you're happy to see them. Praise God. And we truly do thank God that things are continuing to, to be better and to the glory of the Lord. And we appreciate the privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you again, Mayor, for all you've done to help this whole parish and area and the state. Let's give God praise together for being good to us. Oh, we're coming out of this. We're coming through it. In the name of the Lord we are. Amen. As we take this moment together to celebrate a little bit, we'll have another picture. I got a chance to get a picture with Vivian yesterday, surrounded by the two sisters. I'm going to tell you, you talk about two little girls that love their new little sister. Oh, they are, yeah, they're, I'm telling you folks, now that's, that's worth doing right there. And they, uh, they just, uh, we, so we celebrate with you, dear brother. Chili, there he is back there. I enjoyed so much the chance to be in their home for a few minutes. And let's give the, the, the our dear elder and sister Tilly. Let's give them all a great big. We love them so much, and and uh, that little Vivian is a darling. So um, we do want to continue to thank God and celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate a little bit of a little bit of this wonderful Jalen as well. He was here last Sunday. I'm thinking they may be here sometime today. And Charlie Dodson's doing better, and our dear brother Burns, the Lord's kept his hand on him. A little Caffrey Whitehead is up there somewhere, and the Lord's been good to the Whitehead family. And in Jesus' name, that healing's going to continue. Praise God. Brother Wistein is out of the hospital. We thank God for that. Let's give the Lord praise for that as well. We truly, truly thank the Lord for keeping his hand on Brother Wistein and, of course, then we continue to pray strength to the Porter family and um, also dear Sister Ford and uh, Sister Westmerlin and the Heyman family. Uh, the great, uh, um, I'm sorry, Sandra Heyman Grady and then a little Carson Hamilton. Brother Hill is back there. In a few days we'll have a surgery on his shoulder and we're just asking God. To, he's been in a... Really, I appreciate Brother Hill's effort. He's not, he's not comfortable right now at all. And so uh, thank you, Brother Hill, for continuing to help and, and reach with us. And what an incredible blessing the Hill family is. You love Gladstone and Nadine Hill. They are so precious. They are just wonderful people. And then, of course, many of you would know that our, uh, there was a, a terrible, tragic accident with State, State Trooper Baker in Hammond and... Uh, I know Mayor and others are very aware. I, one of the state troopers, uh, I started to say one of the state troopers stopped me yesterday, and but that wasn't the way he stopped me. We, I went over to say hi. <laughs> and uh, But please do pray for this family. It was just a terrible situation, a very, very, very difficult thing. Brother Boyer's got a brand new little grandbaby that's not so far from being here, and we just ask God's strength to that family and of course Sister Lewin is here somewhere I think I saw there she is had a loss in her family this week in fact uh, yesterday in the graveside and I, our prayers have been with you Sister Lewin we ask God to comfort your family Brother Lewin you all are so important to us and we thank God for you and of course Sister Boswell had a loss in her family also then I understood this morning from Brother Mitchell that his uh uh, stepmother's mother, I believe, just passed away also. So we want to pray. Uh, she's 96. We just ask God to comfort their family. I know there are many needs. Would you mind? And, and there's so, so many things we could say. We can, who is this over here? Now, I'm telling you, I saw you come in and I said, well, I'm telling I mean, the church just opened right here, just right. Like, I know the man family. Come on, I lost, I, 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 I'm, I'm searching for that name right now, and I'm embarrassing. Moxie. How in the world could I have ever lost Moxie? I, it just kept bouncing right off this side, and that's, uh, and she is such a darling. Would y'all welcome Moxie again? We're so thankful for God keeping his hand on Moxie. And, oh, man, she is fitting for church today, I'm telling you. 
Praise God. Would you stretch a hand to heaven with me now if you could? And let's ask God's good help to us all today. Dear Jesus, there are so many things that we know that you're aware of that we could never, never put in words. We don't have the words to say, Lord. We, but you know, and, and even in this moment now, I pray that you would stretch down your hand, that you would watch over these wonderful families, God. There are so many today that, that you have helped them in such a wonderful way. And I'm just asking you, Jesus, again, along with every person in this house, let your mercy be on us today. Let your hand be on us today. Let your help be near us today. In Jesus' name, these names that have been called and these requests that have been made, you know all about them, Lord. I pray for the Louis family. I pray for the Boswell family. I thank you, dear Jesus, for strength of the Mitchell family, Lord. I pray, God, your continued help your Brother Wistine. I pray, Lord, your strength. Every one of these needs, Lord, you know our needs. Touch the state trooper, Lord. Bring him back from this terrible situation that he's been. He's befallen him, Lord. Give him, I pray, give his family a healing help. Oh, Jesus, for your glory, watch over us, Lord. Hallelujah. Could you sing it with us one more time now? While they're singing this chorus, let's let's lift our voice to the Lord. Let's just let's just pray this together. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your help, Lord. This is a song we all know. Come on, let's sing it together. When you call on His name. Let me pause just one moment. I have, I, in the mention of this, I, Sister Nash has had some chemo treatments this week and, and we'll have more. And I understand, Brother Tanner, your mom's going to Houston, I believe, this coming week as well. I talked to your dad several times this week. I, 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 want, I don't want to... I think it would be, we, we just pray service, every service for this precious lady. We're, and I know during the week, many of you are praying. God is giving. We're believing, Sister Nash, a miracle. She's getting, the Lord's going to bring her through this. She's coming out of this. There's healing and help. In Jesus' name, come on, let's lift our voices one more time. Oh, yes, Lord, touching Jesus. Hallelujah. Give her strength right now. Praise God. It's a great morning, church, and we rejoice in the Lord with you. My wife is not here, and I miss her, and thank you for all the kindness towards her. And uh, it's a, this has been a bit of a difficult time for her, so thank you for praying for her. Brother Fee, we're so glad you're home. We're happy for everybody that's in the house. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, got justice here today. Got those precious girls. Praise God. God's good. Hallelujah. Anybody ready for a little worship on this Sunday morning? Let's give him thanks together again. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is, of course, a very special day, Memorial Day. And our Brother McGee, come and lead us in these next few moments in this presentation. And Would you welcome our dear, loved, and honored Brother McGee? Praise God. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord this morning. You can be seated. We're so thankful that for the second week in a row we're able to meet in the sanctuary. What a great blessing. And of course, I, I don't mean this next statement to be anything political, but I was very thrilled and to hear the President of the United States stand up this week and say that church is essential. And it is essential to the people of First United Pentecostal Church. It's essential to us that we come and worship. It's so essential that we even did it in the parking lot or wherever we can find to worship God. Thank you for being here and thankful that our Sunday school departments are back wide open and working and thankful to Dr. Johnson, Brother Lee, for all they do. Today's Yellow Sunday, if you've got the message, I think I was supposed to announce that last Sunday and I forgot it. Maybe they'll forgive me, but uh, we're thankful for them and uh, what a great, great 
job they do with them. And our kids surf is back in operation on Wednesdays, loft as well on Wednesdays for our young people. And what a great thing to be back in the normal uh, ro role of things, although we're still doing a little social distancing the best we can. And uh, so thankful for all of you. And uh, we, again, say thankful for the Tilly family and their new addition. Uh, got Momo and Papa here and uh, Daddy and all of them. With, I know that's very exciting times. This is a very emotional and a very valuable weekend, even though a lot of people may not have an appreciation of it. But this is Memorial Day weekend. You know, as we reflect on today, we remember that it was granted to us by some of the most noble, selfless, and courageous men and women that this country has ever produced. And of course, of those that laid down their lives in defense of this great nation, all the way back to those who gave their lives to establish this nation. This is what Memorial Day weekend is about. Our nation owes a debt to these fallen heroes that we never really can fully repay. And for all of us who walk in the footsteps of those who have gone before us, it's our responsibility, our duty, and even our privilege to honor their sacrifice on this day that we set aside every year to honor those fallen heroes. If you'll stand with us this morning, we have a video presentation, and Brother Lee's coming, and he will be leading us in the pledge. Uh, Sister Wistein will be singing the Star Spangled Banner, and then Brother Lee uh, will give us some st statement about this great day that we're celebrating. In every generation, they sang. In every generation, they served. In every generation, they sacrificed. For two and a half centuries, on land, sea, and in the air, they fought and died for an idea bigger than themselves. They are the Americans of every race and faith who swear a sacred oath of honor and live it to the last. And when that moment comes, they lay down their lives for the country they love, protecting their comrades, their families, and their nation. They are the bold angels now, examples to us all. On this day, let us honor their sacrifice and call upon ourselves to walk in their footsteps boldly. For they have led the way to the America we must be. We're going to take a moment to do the pledge to the flag and then we will continue. If everybody could please place the flag right hand over the heart. And follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air came proof through the night that our flag 
You know, in the United States, united. What a concept that men and women have fought tirelessly from generation to generation to create. United. In the United States, Memorial Day is held each year to honor all the military members who have died while serving this great nation. I think it is appropriate to remind us and to uphold their memory. At the conclusion of the American Civil War, some communities began holding remembrance parades for those who gave their life to gain freedom in a newfound America. It was called Decoration Day then, and it wasn't really until the 1970s that this day became a national holiday. It's a day for remembering. It's a day we set aside to remember our veterans who have fallen in battle. Today, personally, is a very rough day. It's a day to remember those who have sacrificed their lives so I can stand here before you. They have given us so much, and myself, freedom to be free, to make a choice to be free. In these words penned over a hundred years ago in 1884, uh, Mr. Oliver Holmes said, So to the indifferent inquirer who asked why Memorial Day is still kept up, we may answer this. It celebrates and solemnly affirms from year to year a national act of enthusiasm and faith. It embodies in the most impressive form our belief that to act with enthusiasm and faith is the condition of acting greatly. For more than a hundred years later, I stand here today before you to declare that we are an evident of acting greatly to remember those who have sacrificed, and I thank God for their sacrifice. I know our nation has its problems, what nation doesn't, but it is still the greatest and best nation on the earth. For those of us who have who've had the privilege to live in America, we ought to thank God for that blessing each and every day. I have tread in nations where their freedoms are none. Ours are abundant. I thank God for every soldier that's ever gone off to battle, for every man and woman who's ever left their home and families for this great cause, for every fallen comrade that has ever given their life to ensure the freedoms that you and I enjoy today. I thank God we are still a land of the free and a home of the brave. The brave, the brave. It is noted that the average age of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice between the American Civil War and the recent war in Afghanistan is only about 25 years old, the youngest being just 15. Imagine. There is something to be said of young men and young women who willingly march towards death year after year to the defense of the freedoms of this great nation. Before James Garfield became president, he served in Ohio. And he said this, one, 
Memorial Day, he said, We do not know one promise these men made, one pledge they gave, one word they spoke, but we do know they summed up and perfected by one supreme act. The highest virtues of men and citizens. For love of country they accepted death and thus resolved all doubts and made immortal their patriotism and their virtue. Heaven above even has something to say about the ultimate sacrifice, a life given away. In a most often quoted piece of scripture, but I garner you to pay very close attention and listen. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. To give yourself away to a greater cause than yourself is the greatest ideal in heaven and here on earth. So it is today that I salute all men and all women who lay down their life for their friends. And I thank you. It is much a heavy day in my heart as I remember the 76 friends that walked in front of bullets and bombs so I could stand here before you. I yet knew Jesus. It was out of that conflict that I asked greater questions as I have seen the worst and the best of men. I have served beside some of the bravest Americans and yet they have no college degree. Some of the greatest Americans and yet they have no family of their own. The greatest American, they have no grandchildren and no children. Some of the greatest Americans have upheld our freedoms to walk where they could not walk, to speak where they could not speak, and to worship before yet they understood what worship even was. I thank you. Thank you for standing again. You may be seated. Let us never, never, never forget and never lose our respect for those who've paid that ultimate price. We're a very different community here in Vernon Parish, Leesville, and the surrounding area. We have Fort Polk, one of the premier, if not the most premier, training site in the United States Army. Almost 90%, I read an article at, at one point, of all the men who went to Iraq and Afghanistan come right here to Fort Polk and train to go defend uh, this great cause of America and to serve their country. And we are tremendously appreciate Fort Polk and not only uh, what it represents, but what it contributes to our economy and to our people and great people that we get, such as Brother Lee, who came to us uh, through the military. <laughs> We've had some great outstanding people, and Fort Polk has meant a bunch. And a gentleman who works very closely with the Fort Polk community and has fought the good fight to, to maintain and keep this facility in our area is our good mayor, and we're going to ask him to come at this time and, and uh, make some remarks. Mayor Allen, would you stand as Mayor Allen comes? Uh, you can be seated. Thank you. I frequently speak at the Pentagon and MCOM in front of the leadership of this country. I am never more honored than I am when my pastor trusts me to speak to you, my church family. When I started praying about running for mayor two terms ago, I had three goals. One, 
I didn't want people to talk about my family. Two, I didn't want people to talk about my church. I wasn't successful in either one of those. But I wanted to change the relationship and reputation of Leesville and Fort Polk. As Brother McGee mentioned, Fort Polk is the largest employer in the state of Louisiana and inserts more money into the state's economy than any other industry. The relationship between Fort Polk, Fort Polk's leaders, and the community had been rocky, to say the least. And the number one reason for Fort Polk always being on the chopping block when talks of military cuts came down was that very relationship. Most of senior Army leadership um, is serving at Central Command or MCOM or at the Pentagon have all been stationed at Fort Polk and took that relationship with them when they left. So the dislike for Leesville and Vernon Parish was deeper than this just the current leadership. Then one night in a little Pentecostal prayer meeting, I heard a lady speak these words. She said, God, we need economic development. And she said, and we need the relationship between Leesville and Fort Polk that was damaged many years ago to be fixed. The next day, I got a phone call from a, a man by the name of Scott Drawdy, who used to be a member of this church. And from that phone call, Champion Mobile Homes contract was negotiated and signed and brought 250 jobs to our community. One week later, I got a call from Colonel Athey, who was then stationed at Fort Polk, and told me about uh, intergovernmental service agreement uh, partnership between Army bases and communities. We began to work on that intergovernmental agreement. One year later, with the help of many men and women in this community, one key player who is currently a member of this church, Mr. Brother Nathan Jernigan, that IGSA was executed and Leesville now holds the largest intergovernmental inter service agreement in the history of the world. God can put the right people in the right place at the right time to make anything happen. That IGSA generates about $3 million a year for the city of Leesville and save Fort Polk over $100 million in operating cost. It removed us from the chopping block. All over this world, it's known as the Leesville Fort Polk model. And they're trying to copy what God has done right here in little old Leesville. At the request of my personal friend and commanding general, Patrick Frank, and the governor of this great state, on June 8th of this year, the annexation of Fort Polk Entrance Road will be officially complete, and it will be the city of Leesville on Fort Polk Entrance Road. We have state and federal assistance with design already in the works to make Entrance Road look like it leads 
to where heroes live and work. So how is the relationship now between this community and Fort Polk? We are the most respected and well-known military community in the world. Thank God. <laughs> Soldiers and families used to cry when they found out they were st going to be stationed at Fort Polk. Now they cry when they leave. And it's because of you. It's because this community loves them right where they are. Most communities will have to wait until they get to heaven to walk amongst heroes. But please know that this community is full of heroes. And you walk amongst them daily. Keep in mind that not all of them wear a uniform, some of them walk out these doors that we call a prayer room. I will always stand for the flag. I will always kneel in a prayer room before my God. And I will always respect them that fight for my freedom. God bless America. Thank you, Mayor. You may be seated. And I'd also add to that, in fact, probably a little, very few people know right now that even now, uh, beginning in the next couple of weeks, uh, the U.S. Army is conducting a uh, training exercise, a rotation that is being the model for the U.S. Army because it's the first under this COVID uh, mitigation efforts that are being doing, and they were there yesterday, as uh, Shelly and I are privileged to in process some yesterday. Uh, but they were there taking pictures to send to the commanding generals of the Army uh, to show how it's being done at Fort Polk. Thank God for Fort Polk. <clears throat> at this time, we want to recognize as we've talked about this great Memorial Day and the sacrifices that were paid not only by those heroes who sacrificed and gave their life but their families are also affected. Do we have anyone today in the audience who has a family member who has lost their life uh, in the service of this great country? Do we have any here today? I know Sister Keaton, their Sister Manasco, Brother Donald Hagen, Thank all of you. These, dear, these people, let's give them a hand. <laughs> Brother Bit Johnson. Not only did they sacrifice, but these families lost a family member who paid that ultimate price. They also contributed to this great day. And also, as Brother Lee mentioned, there's many men and women who have served this country, who have been blessed, and God blessed them to serve. And when they served, they signed on the dotted line, willing to give their life, if necessary, defense of this nation when they served. And that's our veterans. And I know we have a Veterans Day too, but if there's any veterans in the house, we would ask you to just stand right now. Uh, these men and women uh, signed and served this great country and served in effort and said to them when they joined and served in that country that I'm willing to give my life if necessary for defense of this great nation. We honor these men this morning and women. Will you continue to stand with us this morning as Sister Christine sings God Bless America.
again, you may be seated, and thank you so much for helping us to take time in this service this morning to honor this great day and honor this great nation and our people and uh, those who paid that ultimate sacrifice. Next Sunday uh, will be Pentecost Sunday, and Brother Jeremiah Kleindance will be ministering to us in the morning and evening service. And at this time, Brother Kleindance has some announcements for us. He's going to come. Amen. Praise the Lord, church family. Amen. I can't help but think, uh, early this morning I was doing my devotion and I read about the classic story of the Good Samaritan. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about that there was a man, a certain man, that fell uh, into a ditch. The Bible says that a Good Samaritan came where he was. He stepped down, he climbed into the ditch, and he came where he was. Can I tell you, we are serving a God. He'll come where you are. He'll step down and he'll help you up. We're serving a God like that. Amen. Yes, on announcements uh, tonight, immediately after service, uh, the youth were going to be having a fun night over across the street in the gym. Uh, for those that want to come, please, you can stop at McDonald's or your favorite fast food restaurant and bring the food, and we'll sit and eat together and have a good time. Amen. And Brother James, if you would come, uh, we have an announcement on June the 7th. Uh, Brother James, he is going to discuss that and talk to us about that. God bless you, Brother James. Unless you're physically unable to do so, can you guys please stand? All right, you may be seated. I just figured I'd get your blood pumping a little bit because on June 7th p.m. at 6 o'clock, there is no service that day, but there is a volleyball tournament. Um, and so I just wanted to share a little bit with you guys on that. So let me get this down. We're still working out the fine details on it. However, um, there is going to be six teams, and there is six people per team. So we're going to need 36 players. Um, and there will be some team captains chosen, and that's what we're still working on. So once we have those for you, I believe on Wednesday, uh, you could go to those team captains, or they'll go to you to recruit you. Um, and the way we're going to do it, we're going to mix it up a little bit. Each team's going to have the ability to earn an extra five points per game. So if, you're, if team one loses 23 to 26, but they earn an extra four points, then they technically win that game. Um, at the end of the tournament, there's only going to be five games played. At the end of the tournament, each the winning team, each player will receive a $10 gift card. And then as well, food will be provided that night. And we do want everyone as possible to come. Um, so food will be provided and it will be free. Um, so just come, join us, fellowship. And however, there will be a dessert bar. And that dessert bar will be donation-based, provided from the youth group. And um, all the money that's raised that night at that dessert bar will go towards um, one of the churches. She's for Christ. There you go. So all money that's raised that night will go towards She's for Christ. So more information to come, but June 7th at 6 o'clock. Thank you. We appreciate our youth department. Appreciate all of you being very tolerant with us this morning. We've our, our announcements are very lengthy, and we took time to honor. Of course, we definitely wanted to honor uh, this great day and what it represents. But on June the seventh, uh, our pastor will be speaking to us, and uh, after service on that Sunday, we'll be doing Mothers of the World. And Sister Teasley is coming in a moment, I think. Oh, there she is. Yes, to tell us about that. I lost you. Praise the Lord. Everybody say Mother's Memorial. This service today was to recognize in memory of those people that have given so much for the freedoms that you and I um, get to enjoy. And I, I'm moved every time, Brother McGee, when I think about the sacrifice of our military. Whew. Anyway, um, and I think that's a good thing. I think we should feel that way, and I'm so glad. But I want to talk to you about another memory, and that memory is of the mothers that have already gone on before that were in our church that worked so tirelessly. I know that we've got a group of young women that are working hard to resurrect the um, Leesville Pentecostal Church hot tamales. And I, I want to applaud them because they're working so hard. Um, 
we, we kind of faltered, I guess, somewhere in the process of, of letting that recipe um, uh, main, it be able to maintain with us or whatever, but Sister Courtney Whitehead is working so hard trying to just reestablish having those hot tamales to bring back the memory and I think the spirit of Mother's Memorial. <laughs> I remember when we used to uh, make hot tamales and I would be so tired, Brother Christian, I have to admit it. We made like Three and four hundred dozen. Do you remember Sister Hilton? We, ma we made so many. Um, Sister Hagen, um, Sister Glenda Welch, many of us, Sister Munley. Um, and I look back at that and I can remember. And I can remember going in and I can remember when Sister B.V. Burns was over it and then Sister Modina No, Sister uh, Westmoreland shaking her head. What a memory. But I can remember I went in um, after receiving the Holy Ghost and I thought, this is something I can do for God. And anyway, it was really kind of funny because they'd give you a task to do and I would try it and I didn't do very well and they were just very direct. They'd just say, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, they were looking for quality work and I, that wasn't me. <laughs> they'd give me something else to do. But anyway, I finally figured out how to roll a hot tamale. You know, and I, I was so proud to learn something, Sister Westmoreland, that I could do to contribute. It was just great to be a part of something that meant so much more. Because when they would recognize how much we had given in an offering that year, we remembered those sore feet and swollen ankles from standing and making all those hot tamales. And, and I don't even know why I'm sharing that. That's not even in my notes today. But I just think about the past and I think about the sacrifice. And we're, we're so blessed to be of a church that has been so giving for so long. Sometimes I'm almost embarrassed to get up here and say, you know, it's Mother's Memorial time again. And we need to reach deeper than we've ever done. But, you know, if, if our church loses its vision to missions, we might as well shut the doors because that's what it's really about. It's to find, to seek out, to save lost souls. That's what it's all about. And, and, and I think about in my life how blessed that I've been. And I thought about, uh, Brother Allen was talking, I thought about, you know, Brother Teasley's blessed because he got a job at Fort Polk. Had Fort Polk not been there, we would not be blessed today. And I realize that God orchestrates things in our lives. He's blessed us. And right now, you may be in a financial blessing situation. That's not by accident. God gives so that we can give. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, back to why I'm supposed to be here, and I'll shut up. I apologize, Brother McGee. But on June the 7th is our target offering date goal for Mother's Memorial. Some of you, I've tried to reach out to you. I don't have everybody's phone number, believe it or not. I don't try to collect it, but some people I've communicated with. And I've asked you, if you would, to give us a pledge or a donation so that we can uh, build up an offering. Uh, I reached out and asked for some people to participate and let's see how many offerings and pledges we could get this year. And I want to tell you that Sister Glenda Welch, if she would stand, she always response. Stan, Sister Glenn, she doesn't know this. I appreciate. She She said, Sister Cindy, I'll do whatever I can do. Sister Christian said, I'll do whatever I can do. Thank you. I, I know that uh, Brother Lewis and um, Sister Glenda Lewis, Brother uh, Philip, um, Brother Dusty, different ones have sacrificed year after year. I want you to know that we appreciate what you've done. It was not always easy to go and ask people, would you mind donating to our church? Our church looks blessed. It is blessed, but it looks blessed. And sometimes it's not easy to go into a merchant place and, and say, you know, I, 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 our church is doing this for missions. Would you donate? Would you mind giving? Because it's not a comfortable thing to do, but it's a good thing. It is a good thing. If we can give more, it's all worth that. So anyway, we've tried to create a fun way for you to give on June the 7th. If you haven't already given a pledge, and you want to give a pledge, please do so. See Sister Christian, Sister Welch, or me, and, and make that donation. That's going toward a, a special contribution we're building for. But also on June the 7th, after Sunday morning service, we're going to have a nice lunching next door. Sister Hill, Sister Cryer, different ones are going to help prepare a nice lunch for you and your, your family. But um, And it's just going to be for a small donation, whatever you'd like to give or whatever. But we are also been con collecting all different types of brand new items to auction. And uh, only a couple of things, some of them, um, a couple of things I've received are not exactly brand new, but they look exactly brand new. The people I know, like for instance, we have a beautiful engraved uh, Remington 243 rifle. Am I saying the right thing? I remember one time in a talk I was given and I said it was a 240, no, a six, 747. And the kids that I was talking to all began to fall out of their chairs and I, I didn't realize I just said it was an airplane instead of a gun. But anyway, you can 
shoot a 747. I'm not sure you can, but anyway, it's a 243. It's beautiful, and as far as I know, the only time it was shot was to zero in the scope that's on it. That's been donated for this auction, and um, it's, I mean, some wonderful things. Uh, Sister Munley uh, has a brand new, if I'm saying it right, 13 and a half horsepower engine that can be used on someone's lawnmower or a go-kart or some other uh, thing or what brand new still in the box we've got some great wonderful items we've got a grill that was donated by somebody in the church brand new still in the box we talked about putting it together but they said well they may want to give it as a gift or this would be easier to to be able to transport well we've got a lot of things so we've got all these gifts we've got gift baskets we've got uh, some surprise gifts that will be concealed we've got um, baked goods that will be auctioned that day so it's going to be a time of fun but it's a time for you to be able to give and um, so we want you to participate to be a part of that to give all that you can for Mother's Memorial one time a year we ask for this we like our church to be recognized nationally I, I, I hate to say that because it sounds like vanity but I think that what we like is to know that our sisters who have all gone before that they'll know we're still working as hard now as they worked then and it's still for the same reason, to give God the glory and to see so safe. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, June 7th, after Sunday morning, please don't run off and eat. We're going to have a nice lunch for you. And come and enjoy the fellowship. There'll be something for everyone. We want to make it um, just so successful and a lot of fun. And I appreciate all of your support and all your encouragement. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Taylor. Sit up straight, take a real deep breath. <sighs> Only one more announcement. <laughs> the last Sunday in this month, the last weekend this month, we had to postpone our pastoral uh, anniversary for our pastor and first lady. We'll be doing that the last weekend of this month. On the 27th, they'll have a, a minister's and wives uh, social uh, just to celebrate with some of their friends and some local ministers and their wives. And then on Sunday the 28th, we'll be having our anniversary service. Brother Jerry Jones will be ministering, honoring our pastor and first lady. And then afterwards, we will be having a church-wide social or event over in our Family Life Center where everyone's encouraged to come, and we'll just have a great time of fellowship and rejoice and reflect on these past 10 years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. At this time, we're asking our ushers to come. Our ask, uh, correction, uh, because of the virus situation, we're asking that you just come and place your offering in the, in the baskets. That way we don't have to pass the baskets around and have people touching it. So in, in honor of what the government has uh, asked us to do as far as uh, mitigation efforts with the virus, uh, we're asking that you do that. Thank you for your giving. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you today for your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, that you've blessed us. Thank you, Lord, as we celebrate this day today. Thank you for every individual that's here. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Page 381.
the Lord, church. I don't know about you, but the scripture that says, I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. It, it's took on a whole new meaning for me. Uh, this quarantine time, um, I decided to go back and start reading my Bible from the beginning. And there were so many extraordinary experiences in different places. Uh, Moses at the burning bush, Joshua and Jericho. And God told them to take their sandals off because they were on holy ground. And I started reading and studying a little bit more. And in the Bible, when you take your sandals off, you're exposing yourself. You're showing humility and dignity. And they only wore sandals in the holiest, they didn't wear shoes in the holy places. And have you ever just took your shoes off and just felt the ground beneath you? You can feel the rocks in the service and you feel everything around you because your sandals are off. And the ground that they were standing on, it wasn't holy because they were standing on it. It was made holy because the presence of God was there. The presence of God was there. And I'm so thankful this morning that we can walk into this house because of Jesus and the cross. He tore the veil. We can have these holy ground moments here right now in this place. And I'm so thankful that we can call on the name of Jesus Christ. Things change. Things change when you call on the name of Jesus Christ. And I encourage you this morning, if you're needing something, just lift your hands, take your sandals off, and just become aware of the presence that you're in. You're in the presence of the holiest of holy, Jesus Christ. Worship with us as we sing. Thank you. 
issues change everything. Praise God, praise God. Coming right now, and Brother Bennett, I meant to mention earlier about we're thankful the Lord kept his hand on you this week, and we're praying strength to you. You had significant surgery early in the week, and in Jesus' name, strength continue to you, Brother Bennett. Praise God. Happy to see the guests with the Dowdens there. Can you give this great worship team a wonderful appreciation, Sister Kristen Wistine, all of these singers? very much. Brother Shane Tilly, Jaron, I, I heard that guitar today. Hallelujah. That's just great. Tonight will be a great night. Our good honored evangelist will be with us again. This man needs no introduction anywhere uh, in North America. He has preached for many, many years and a great friend to many in this church and a personal friend of mine. And I'm honored today to have an outstanding evangelist with us. He'll be here tonight as well. Would you welcome with me tonight, uh, this morning and tonight, our dear honored evangelist, Greg Kuhn. Would you make welcome and let's worship the Lord with him. Tremendous man of God. Thank you, Pastor. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. He's worthy. God, we worship you. We thank you. We adore you. We magnify you, Jesus. I love what I feel in the presence of the Lord. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Praise God. I love what I feel in the presence of God. Surely the Lord is in this place. The church is not just a building, but it is where we are. I'm glad to be a part of the church. I want to give honor today to uh, those who have fallen in the line of duty. Thank you, Brother Lee. That was outstanding. Mayor Allen, that was outstanding, incredible. Give honor to Brother McGee, to Brother Kleindance, and also to your great pastor, a friend of mine for many, many years. For years he came to our church in Texas and he preached and would sing, and wow, what a blessing his ministry is. Are you thankful for your pastor and the first lady? I give honor to whom honor is due. It's okay to give them a hand. We give honor to the man of God. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 29, begin reading in verse number 35. 2 Chronicles, chapter 29, verse number 35. The word of the Lord says, and also the burnt offerings were in abundance with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order, and Hezekiah rejoiced in all the people that God had prepared the people, for the thing was done suddenly. Could someone say suddenly? I want to preach today on this subject. This is a suddenly season. Praise God. Thank you for standing, and you may be seated. Hezekiah began to reign at 25 years of age in Jerusalem, 
And under his reign, the first year, he called for a convocation of the priests and the Levites, instructing them to repair, number one, the doors of the temple. We need to anoint the doors so that whosoever will can come and drink of the waters of life. Number two, he said to sanctify yourselves. Number three, cleanse the house. And number four, restore temple worship. All of these things were accomplished, uh, the Bible says, suddenly. The Bible tells us that Jesus was the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. And yet for 4,000 years or more, Jesus remained only a thought, the logos in the mind of God. But when the time was right and the conditions were met, this is how it was announced, Luke 2.13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Ezekiel was directed by God to go to a boneyard one day. God asked Ezekiel a very interesting question. He said, Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest, uh, praise God. When Ezekiel's faith matched God's will, he began to prophesy in faith. When God asked us if he can do a miracle, we need to say, yes, we believe that all things are possible. Ezekiel 37, 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And bones came together, bone to his bone. It did not take nine months for the fetus to gestate. It didn't take 30 years for a child to be born and a warrior to be developed. But what God did, he did it suddenly. He did it immediately. He did it instantaneously. I feel the wind of the Spirit that is blowing through this house this morning. Somebody's going to stand up. And what God is going to accomplish, he will do it suddenly. God's system is fantastic. His rule of economics is this. God can enable me to sell my home when no one's buying. His rules of employment. God enables me to find a job when no one's hiring. His rule of relationships. God brings reconciliation with someone whom I had an irreconcilable difference his rule of psychological stamina is this. God gives me strength for a trial that I never thought I could endure. I'm thankful that God plays by a different set of rules. My hope today is not in the government. It's not in the economy. But my hope is in Jesus Christ. He is the answer to every problem. He makes the difference in our lives. In John 6, 16 through 21, the disciples, the Bible says they were in a storm and exceedingly frightful. And Jesus came walking on the water. When they received him, the Bible says, uh, immediately their ship was at land. Uh, I wish somebody here today, you may be in a storm in your life, uh, but if you'll allow Jesus on your vessel, I believe you can make it instantaneously. Uh, you can make it immediately. Immediately to your destination. Come on, church. God is trying to transition us from 40 years of wandering to seven years of conquering. If God promised it, is there anybody in the house who believes that God is still able to perform what he has promised in our life? Could you lift your voice and could somebody give a shout of praise to the king, immortal, invisible, the only wise God? For Michael Jordan, it was hundreds of jump shots a day. For Mark Cuban, it was seven years without a vacation. For Venus and Serena, they were up at 6 a.m., at seven years of age, hitting balls and then sudden success. After the Chinese bamboo tree is planted, there is no growth for five years. But then it grows 90 feet in six weeks. 
In some cases, it grows six feet in 24 hours. That's astounding. That's unbelievable to me. Oftentimes, we wait and we pray for our desires to be fulfilled, our goals to be reached, our dreams to be realized, our destinies to be manifested, the surrounding celestial chosen in the womb. It can be lying latent and dormant and anticipating, but I believe that suddenly. You can be placed in prominence, used in utterance. You can be prominently prospered, exceedingly blessed. God can open windows. He can release funds. There can be unexpected opportunities. Does anybody believe in this house that God wants to do a miracle and he wants to do it right now in this service? Praise God in a moment. He cometh as lightning. From the east to the west, in one millisecond, the reaper can overtake the sower. God can restore the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm has destroyed. I've seen people an alcoholic for 30 years. Then five minutes in the presence of Jesus, uh, they were delivered by the hand of God. Uh, I've seen people lost for 40 years. Uh, and one moment uh, in the presence of Jesus, uh, come on church, let us not be weary uh, in well-doing. Uh, for in due season, uh, we shall reap uh, if we faint not. Uh, how many of you have been paying your tithes? Uh, how many of you been faithful to church. Come on, if you have been, you need to get up and tell the devil, devil, I'm due a miracle. I'm due a blessing. I'm due a financial breakthrough. Come on, where are my praisers who would say I'm due a miracle? This is my due season. I will receive it in Jesus' name. Could somebody put your hands together and give God a shout of praise for he alone alone. He is worthy. Jesus told his disciples in Luke 24, 49, he said, continue to Jerusalem. There's always a prelude to Pentecost. Pentecost doesn't just happen. Praise God, 50 days of waiting. But they didn't wait with their arms folded. They didn't wait quietly. But in that upper room, they begin to praise God. While you're waiting, why don't you praise him? While you're waiting, why don't you just keep on praying and say, God, it may not have come yesterday, but I believe today could be the day. And as they were praising God on that 50th day, the Bible says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were seated. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Could somebody lift your hands and say, today is my day for a miracle. There's going to be a breakthrough. I know it's Memorial Day, but God is still a miracle-working God. Memorial Day. 120 people received the Holy Ghost instantly. 3,000 instantaneously, 5,000 immediately. Come on, church, I believe in sudden healing. I believe in sudden prosperity. I believe in sudden miracles. I believe in sudden sounds from heaven. Does anybody believe that God can give you a breakthrough on this Sunday morning while the world is out there in a boat skiing somewhere? I'm glad I'm in the presence of Jehovah Jireh, the God that still provides my every need. My son and I were driving to California to preach. We were driving through that desert in Arizona. I had my hand out the window and in that hot, arid desert, every once in a while there would be a cool place that I would feel like a pocket of cool air. And I, I wondered what that was, and that's a microclimate. It's an atmospheric zone where the climate is different than the area around Praise God. They said when Verbal Bean used to preach, he'd be preaching along the front, he'd stop. 
And he'd say, it's here, right here in this pocket. It's invisible, but I feel the Holy Ghost right here. They said everybody that walked into that area that he talked about, they were slain in the Holy Ghost. Uh, They were filled with the Spirit. Uh, They were healed of their affliction. Uh, When you walked into this church, uh, when you walked into First Pentecostal Church uh, in Leesville, you just walked into a microclimate. Uh, Come on, I know you've been worshiping God at home, uh, but when you walked into this house... uh, There is an anointing that can destroy every yoke. Could somebody praise him? Thank God I'm not in quarantine. I'm in the house of God where two or three are gathered together. In my name, he said, there I will be in the midst of them. I've come to preach to somebody here today. You are so frustrated with the season you're living in. You're so frustrated with what you're going through. Some of us are frustrated because we've had to be locked away at our home. But I wish somebody would understand there's something that you can do that will change your season. You know what changes your season? It's the same thing that changes the seasons of this world. When the sun Praise God when that earth begins to lean toward that sun. The season begins to change from winter to summer. I wish somebody would lean in toward the son of righteousness who is arising with healing in his wings. Come on, I don't care how far you are from God. It's not your proximity. It is your position. I wish somebody would lean in and say today is my day for a miracle. Come on, you've carried it long enough. Would you lean in? Believe, could we put our hands together? Could we give God a great shout of praise for he alone is worthy? Could somebody magnify the Lord with me? Let us exalt his name together. Come on, church, this is not just a holiday. This is a celebration. That's why I enter his gates with thanksgiving. That's why I come into his courts with praise. I don't know about you, but I will bless the Lord. Has God been good to you? Has God ever healed your children? Has God ever paid your mortgage? You ought to be giving God a shout of praise. Come on, you could be in a nursing home. That's where my father is. But thank God I'm still in the presence of the Lord. Thank God we're not at home. But we are gathered together, people of God. I suffered for five years, Pastor Christian, with this pain in my stomach. I suffered with it, but you remember Pastor Davis, one Sunday morning, I walked down to the front, he took me in his arms, he began to cry and pray over me, and I felt a warm sensation come over my body from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet and what the doctor couldn't do in five years and what thousands of dollars in doctor expenses could not do. Jesus did it in about two seconds. I've never had any problems like that again. I've come to tell somebody that God is a healer. I don't care how long you struggled. Do you believe that today is the day of salvation that God wants to I was preaching in Louisiana and I was crying. I was going through one of the most difficult times of my life several years ago. And staying with my parents here in Louisiana and I knew I had money to get to church but didn't really have gas money to get home. And so, I'll be honest with you, I just cried all the way to church. I don't know if any of you have ever cried all the way to church. I'll be honest and say, I may be the only person here, but I have. Can you believe somebody had the audacity to tell me the other day? that if I would practice social distancing from my refrigerator, that I would flatten the curve. Praise God. Now, now, now. <clears throat> I cried all the way to church. I was crying, God, I need a miracle. At the end of that service, never happened before, but it may happen again today. A man walked up to me and he said, I think God wants me to bless you. Here's $4,000. You're blessed. Praise God. I left that service. I didn't cry all the way home. I shouted all the way home. I praise. Come on. Do you believe that if God did?
did it for this evangelist uh, that God is about ready uh, to give somebody a breakthrough uh, in the Holy Ghost. If you believe it, uh, would you lift a shout uh, of praise to the King immortal? Come on, you've been praying uh, for your circumstances to change. Uh, Come on, you faced the blinding rain. You felt the cold snow and ice for frozen, frigid season. Winter has obscured the light of your vision, your dream, your revival. Your dead dream is covered in the winter snow. But I feel like in the heart of somebody, that flower of faith is beginning to blossom. I'm coming out with a shout. It won't be this way always. God's going to give me deliverance. God's going to bring me out. God's going to give me a breakthrough. Come on, today is your day of deliverance. This is your season. Would somebody reach out? Would somebody reach up? I may be down, devil, but I'm not out. I'm Coming up with a shout of victory. Uh, Last year on Pentecost Sunday, I saw 42 first-time people receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, Come on, do you believe uh, that when Pentecost Sunday comes, uh, there's going to be a breakthrough? Uh, There's going to be people filled with the Holy Ghost? Could you give him praise for just a moment? Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the presence of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me. Let's sit in front of our computer screens. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to a parking lot service. I've been to all those things. No, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise God. I watched, I was preaching in Arkansas, and I watched Weston. He was paralyzed. One side of his body was. He laid on the front seat, and with the one side of his body that worked, he would lift his hands and praise God. At an altar call, I watched him, Brother Christian. I called for everybody to come. He rolled off the front seat, and he started dragging the side of his body that did didn't work with the side of his body that did work. When he got to the front, he stood up. We laid hands on him. He marched and ran around that building and shouted. You talk about a church getting excited about what God can do. Is there anybody in Leesville that believe what God did in Arkansas? He can do it right now. Would you get on your feet and would you lift your voice and give a shout? Praise. Come on, let's praise him, church. There's about to be a breakthrough. There's about to be a release of anointing. Could somebody magnify him? Musicians, come. Just continue to praise him, church. God's doing a work right now. Some of you, you've prayed through this entire quarantine. You've been praying for months. You've been praying for weeks. But what you've been praying for, God wants to do it today. In a moment, he wants to restore the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm has destroyed. That's it. Somebody's hungry for a miracle. Could I have somebody pray for this man right here? If you're not afraid, just pray for him. If you need a miracle, would you step out from where you are? Come stand in the front. If you want to be socially distanced, that's fine. But just come and stand where you are and lift your hands and say, God, this is my day. This is my moment. This is my season. That's it. Come on, lean in. I don't care how far you are from God. Would you lean in toward the sun? Because the season of your life is about to change. In the name of Jesus, it's been dark. It's been winter for a long time. But I believe the sun is going to 